first book that I read was When Calls the Heart by Jeanette Oak. This is a book that I am really, I just, it took me a while to come around to being interested enough in reading it, but Rainy from Rainy Day Reads made me really intrigued. So I read this uh, with Morgan, my friend Morgan, my Morgan friend, that's how I refer to her, who is a subscriber who I've become friends with, and then Petra from the channel Petra U. And we had a lot of fun reading this. I was not expecting to blast through this. I think I maybe read it in three days. And I just, I was listening to the audiobook and loving knitting while listening, and I couldn't stop listening. <laughs> Our main character of Elizabeth ends up uh, leaving her family in the city and going uh, to be a school teacher out kind of in the middle of nowhere, but it is also her love story. This, the writing in this is nothing astounding, but I just found it really enjoyable and relaxing. It's not going to be a book that will stick with me, but sometimes you're okay with that, just reading um, an easier book, and I just found it, I treat it the same way I do, you know, sitting with a TV show it's a way I relax. So I got what I wanted out of it and I really enjoyed it. The next book that um, I just had loitering on my currently reading on Goodreads for far too long and that was Heaven to Betsy and Betsy in Spite of Herself. I have a really fun reading vlog coming for you. Uh, Christy Lewis is in uh, the first part of the reading vlog and then Rainy is a part of the rest of the reading vlog and I can't wait for you to hear thoughts on this beloved, beloved couple of books. And you know how much I love this series. So it's been wonderful rereading it. And uh, then the next one that I read was The Four Story Mistake by Elizabeth Enright. This is a children's series, the Melendi Family Quartet. I find it incredibly endearing. And uh, the four kids do really have distinct personalities. Christy Lewis had told me that and she was so right. And um, you're getting to see them move to this house in the countryside. And I loved it. I really, really loved it. So I'm very much looking forward to continuing on with the series. There are four books in total. So I have two left. And then I did a reread of The Goose Girl by Shannon Hale. This series I am reading this summer with Taylor from The Babbling Bee. It was wonderful to be back with this book. I loved it just as much as I did the first time. It is a retelling of The Goose Girl fairy tale um, following Ani who has this special connection with certain animals and um, she is a princess and she is in a traveling party where she's the betrothed of a prince of a neighboring kingdom and she is betrayed uh, on the journey there and it is such an adventure, very twisty turny. I loved the character of Ani and right now I am in the middle of Enna Burning which is the next book in the quartet. The next book that I read was Thunder Heights by Phyllis Whitney. I read this with Brie from Falling for Romance. Uh, we read Phyllis Whitney together. Uh, it's not as frequent as I meant it to be when we started the project, but we're reading her together now, and it's this is my favorite Phyllis Whitney now. Um, it is about Camilla King, who uh, travels to Thunder Heights. She has never been there. She's always heard about it from her mother, who was the outcast of the family after she married um, someone who was not of the social standing that her family wanted. And she does not know what to make of her mother's family. And she gets there and these characters are very morally gray. And I love how Phyllis Whitney does that. The house is kind of just falling to pieces. Um, there is no love or care for this place. And then um, her grandfather dies while she is there. She knew he, it was going to happen soon. He was kind of at death's door. And this sets off a turn of events. If you want kind of little, little short snippet Jane Eyre, this is not trying to be Jane Eyre, but it's got those gothic vibes, but it's also very short. This was 215 pages. I loved it, but I am still reeling from this book. It was amazing. An amazing, amazing reading experience. And then a really lovely one, and that was Miss Pettigrew Lives for a Day. Uh, this was the book that won the World Book Day book battle that I hosted along with five other lovely co-hosts. And um, we had a Zoom discussion for this. It was really great to hear people's insights into this book. That is just my favorite way to discuss books now is through a Zoom discussion and to get to bounce off ideas off one another. It makes you kind of really grow in respect for a good book that you've read or 
Uh, sometimes people have convinced me to dislike a book even more, but in this case, everyone really enjoyed it and it was really wonderful to get to discuss it with everyone. And the next one that I read was This Time Next Year We'll Be Laughing. I listened to the audiobook of this, narrated by Jacqueline Winspear, who's the author of the mystery series that I love, Maisie Dobbs. And this is such a moving, poignant read. Uh, she's talking about her upbringing where uh, they were pretty poor. Um, and when she first, um, when she first was growing up, she lived with Romani people when she was really little. Um, but then her dad get, did get a more kind of regular job and, um, just her upbringing. And what was really touching to me about this was this really challenging relationship that she had with her mother, but what grace, um, she showed to her mother writing back. Her mother has passed away. Um, and so she wrote this after her, both of her parents had passed away and just what grace and dignity she gives to her mother, even though they did have these challenging things at the end of the day, they really, really loved each other. And so it's a really beautifully written book about what can be a really challenging relationship at times. And, uh, then Heidi, I finally read Heidi. If you saw my cozy things chat with Victoria from a musical bookworm, she talked up Heidi and I decided to read it and I loved it. I had gone a long time avoiding reading Heidi because I was not sure if I would enjoy it. And I was really, really pleased that I loved this book so much. It just has, does have a lot going for it. The character of Heidi, I found so charming and not saccharine, like I was worried she might be. And um, it, particularly the audiobook that I listened to had these little musical interludes. It just made it an extremely life softening experience listening to it. And um, I highly recommend Heidi. So I'm glad that's a children's classic that I had neglected to read as a child and had been meaning to read for years. So now it is read and I adored it. The next book that I read, and this was probably my favorite reading, reading experience of June, was Miss Pym Disposes by Josephine Tay. This was the first book in my Summer of Suspense Mystery Book Club. Um, you are welcome to join for the month of July. We are discussing The Burden by Mary Westmacott. Um, but the Zoom discussion for this was so good. If any of you are not subscribed to Janelle from Too Fond of Books or Naomi from Naomi's Bookshelf, and I'm trying to remember if there were any other booktubers there. That might have been the only booktubers. I'll link anyone down below who did, um, did attend that discussion. But just to have critical readers talking about a mystery, I feel like mysteries are just kind of often written off as fluff and there is so much depth to this story. It is not your straightforward mystery. There is not a buddy by chapter three, um, like you see in many mysteries. It is suffocating with you, you, Miss Pym is a visiting lecturer at this all girls school. And she is um, just observing the psychology of all the characters. So you're seeing all of this through Miss Pym's eyes. And um, it's kind of building and mounting the tension it's just such uh, an uh, all-encompassing experience as you're reading it, but it's also, it just feels so agonizingly slow at points, but it also made it so much more memorable. Just a very much a slow burner, and I loved discussing with everyone. It made me love the book even more. Um, this is a standalone, and oh, I just, I love Josephine Tay's writing. I think if any other Golden Age mystery author had written this, I would have been bored but it's her writing, just the dialogue and these astute observations and just this sense of place at this school. Um, and it's amazing. It was an amazing experience reading and discussing Miss Pym Disposes. And then lastly, another great mystery that I read. This maybe is tied for my favorite experience because of where I was when I read it. The book is Unnatural Causes by P.D. James. I went on a 10th anniversary trip with my husband, which was lovely. We never really get away. And so we were away for three nights and I brought a whole bag of books with me, but I kind of knew I just wanted to read a P.D. James mystery. This was amazing. This is the third in her series, her Adam Dalgleish series. And the first two books, while I enjoyed them, they were pretty solid three-star reads. This one, I feel like she has really come into her own as an author. In this one, Adam Dalgleish, our main sleuth, is on vacation. He is staying away uh, 
visiting his aunt and she lives in a very isolated location on the coast. And while he is there, uh, a famous mystery author is found in a boat, murdered and particularly in a very gruesome way. But he gets this news right after some locals that live um, in this little sleepy location come to him and say, you know, this man is missing. Does it say his name here? It doesn't say it on the back, but this mystery author, he is missing. We think it's a joke. We think he's like, you know, this is a publicity stunt kind of thing. Um, and one of the people in the group says, you know, I told him this is the way his next victim should be found in, in his book. They're just talking about his next book and the conversations that they had. It's this really gruesome way. And then they find out that the mystery author's body is found and he was killed in the particularly gruesome way that this lady said. And she said, I only told him. I didn't tell anyone else. Um, this is haunting. And I could not put it down. Just the writing in this is so pristine. She is incredibly skilled. It was just delicious. I was eating it all up and um, really haunting and isolated and I loved it. This was a great mystery. It was exactly what I was in the mood for reading wise. I can't recommend it enough. I'm really excited to continue with the series. I've really hopped around in this series. I've read a couple at the end and now at the beginning so I'm kind of making up for things in the middle. Looking forward to continuing on with this series very much. Thank you as always for watching and I will be back with another video soon. Bye.